Doug, do you want everybody here's mic muted, or do you want to? Like... Could you just make sure that um, you can see me when I stand over here? Okay. He also asked, did you want the mics muted over there? Well, uh, what's the standard procedure? Uh... And we've been just leaving it up to the presenter if you want to be able to be interrupted or if you want to do your whole presentation and then open up for questions. Uh, we can leave it open. Yeah, I'll leave their mic on then. Yeah, we can leave it open for questions as we go. Okay. It looks like MCAB and Cam Cambria, theirs are disabled right now. Okay. All right. Can you see me? I can see you, but you're a little bit too. Move <coughs> this little camera a little bit right here. Me. This is uh, Kevin. Yeah, right here. It's Bobby from Montgomery County. Hey. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Can you see us? Or, uh, yes, we can see you. It's just your microphone was uh, disabled. I think it's enabled now. Yeah, you're totally fine. You're ready to go. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. uh -huh. okay. We have to we have to mute the microphone. Okay. All right. Are we ready to go then? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for the Blind webinar program. Uh, we are broadcasting from the Center for Vision Loss today in Allentown. And uh, we thank you all for joining us and for all of our folks in, in attendance here today. Uh, today, we're going to focus on a program that uh, reinforces the critical and very important topic of adequate lighting uh, for individuals with low vision. <coughs> We've invited Diane Michaels, who is a low vision therapist and a low vision specialist. I'm a, I'm a low vision therapist and a vision rehab therapist. A low vision specialist is an eye doctor. Oh, I, I misspoke, <laughs> sorry. Yes, and uh, yeah. so she has prepared our program for today. Uh, she's going to demonstrate uh, some of these items. Uh, I believe she will take some questions as we go, and then um, you know more questions at the end. So uh, uh, Diane's done a lot of work in preparation. She has a lot of uh, devices and, and setups to show you today. So welcome, and welcome, Diane. Thank you. Um, Doug, I'm hoping that I can be heard. I am going to face Rose a little bit more because of her hearing impairment, so she can lift. But if the guys in the monitor need me to crank it up, I'm going to do that. Yeah, they have something beside Coco. Okay. So. I'll look and see if they got Excuse me, someone's um, talking during the program. Maybe you could mute your uh, microphone for now. Thank you. Yeah, they, they, I'll see how many Cokes they have in there. All right. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to talk about is better light for better light. Let's see how many they have in there. Okay. And, oh, that's much better. <laughs> but feel free to turn on your microphone when you have a question. I want people to ask questions because that's the way we all learn. Better Life for Better Sight is a nice catchy uh, title and I thought Rita was so sharp to have that title but she got it from Vision Aware and Vision Aware website is a really cool website if you're able to use a computer. Vision Aware has a lot of resources for visually impaired people and I did take some of my information from that site just to make it clear. Lighting can be the critical difference between someone being able to maximize their remaining vision or having to function at a lower of visual acuity level. There's evidence that demands that what people see in the low vision clinic is not often reproduced at home. <coughs> this leads to frustration on, the path, on behalf of the clients. They prescribed a device. Let's say you go to see the low vision doctor. You're given this great device you in a low vision clinic are able to read and you think, oh my God, that's wonderful. Then you bring it home and find that you can't use it and maybe it ends up in your sock drawer. Well, the lighting the expert site is one of the main factors for their difficulty in being able to use the, the, the device. And this was actually noted in um, an article in JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association. So lighting 
is a huge thing. So if you went to the low vision doctor and you got that great magnifier, you're okay. not using it, you you really feel like bereft and disabled because this was supposed to help you. What's, what's the piece of the puzzle? There's two things, the lighting and learning the techniques for using a, a higher which we won't go into today. And lighting being a very complex topic, it's composed of different factors. Intensity of light, the type of light, position of light, and even the age of the person, as well as the type of eye disease. All those things impact um, our lighting and what kind of lighting we need. And some other factors are um, the amount of glare we see, <coughs> clutter, and I'll describe what visual clutter is, uh, contrast issues, and also some other issues having to do with not understanding lighting and knowing what's the right, right amount of light for you. Lighting is an individual <coughs> thing. Maybe I need 100 watts, and it's wonderful, but maybe that just totally obliterates somebody else's vision. So everybody who is visually impaired, there's no two, you know, if someone's 2200 due to macular degeneration, they respond differently to different levels of light. There's no easy solution to say, okay, you have this problem, you need this light. You have this problem, you need this light. It is so personal that it's one of those things that why we're going to do trial and error. And behind me, just for orientation's sake, I have different light bulbs, different stations, and so most of the session today is going to be practice that you're going to try the different lighting options to see if perhaps one lighting option is better for you than another. Did you just randomly choose that number, 2200? I did. I just ch chose it out of the woodwork. I have to be 2100. Okay, well that's great. 2100 is good vision. So maybe for you, lighting is going to make a big difference on what you see. And it's not all about reading. It could be just for orientation's sake or for being able to, to manage to pour your cup of coffee. Lighting doesn't have to be stuck on the desk in your office. Lighting is everywhere. Cooking. Cooking. Yes, cooking is another place for lighting. Showering. Cleaning, showering, putting on makeup, uh, dressing, matching clothes. All of those things we need lighting to do. Without good lighting, you'll feel more visually impaired. Right? How many people with macular degeneration have told me on a cloudy day they can't see at all? I mean, cloudy days for some people are terrible, whereas for other people, it's great. So again, it's an individual thing. So just because your neighbor does great with a 60 watt, uh, maybe clear crystal light bulb, but you do better with a Verilux lamp, that's okay. It's what works for your eyesight. Now, age is an important thing too to know. Do you know we're all aging? Dum, dum, dum. That's really bad, but the other option is not really good, which is death, so we don't want death. So aging, do you know that a normal person, as they age, will require more light? And um, this is a really interesting example. Now, this is just for someone with normal vision. If somebody with normal 2020 vision that can drive a car needs a 100-watt light bulb at age 20, they would need 120 at age 30, <coughs> 145 at age 40, it gets higher, 180 at age 50, 230 at age 60, 300 at age 70, and I hate to tell you what they need for age 80. <laughs> now, so that's a normal person. So, and how many of us change our lamps as we age? I can tell you, I've got the same lamps I've had since I was in college, some of them anyway. So many of us, however, don't increase our wattage in our lighting fixtures to accommodate the additional need for lighting. The need for increased light, lighting can't be done by putting a larger wattage bulb in a fixture. That would be very bad if you get a fire. Is that loud enough or not loud enough? It's a little louder, yeah. Okay. Don't stick a 100 watt bulb in that. You'll have a problem, and I wouldn't want you to have a problem. So putting a larger watt bulb into a fixture may not be the right answer. 
But increased lighting can be synthesized by correct positioning of, of the light, as well as other issues. So <clears throat> we may not be able to put a Thanks kind of wild light bulb in another wild land, but there's other ways to get around that. Thanks. Okay. A little bit more? Oh, a little bit more. I've only got one ear. Right? Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to, she's echo what, what's your same name again? Tina. Tina said, well, then we should use more lights. She's correct. And amplifying the wattage by having more lamps. Now, okay, so now we've got the normal aging problem with the need for light. A normal person with 20 20. At age 20, if you want to move in a little closer, I can move the chairs a little closer. They're going to need a higher water. That's normal vision. We're not even talking about visual impairment. Now, diagnosis. Now, there is another monkey wrench. Different eye disease impact us in different ways. And I know all of you could share some stories about how, how your eye disease has affected what you see. For example, with macular degeneration, anybody have macular degeneration in this room? All right, okay, got oh, a lot. It's a very common eye disease. Macular degeneration is caused by the cones in the retina. Um, they become damaged, and that's in the central part of your retina. And that means you're having to use the peripheral part of your eyesight to see. And those are the rods in the retina, and the rods require more light. And that's why with macular degeneration, you need to have more light. A study by Alex Bauer um, on lighting and age-related macular degeneration found that patients with increased lighting could improve their reading speed and reduce the amount of magnification they actually need. So you see, for people with macular degeneration, lighting is huge because, let me tell you, it is much easier to read with a 4x magnifier mm -hmm. than a 7x. The 7x is awful small. And if you have macular degeneration and you can put enough light on the subject, you may not need as powerful a magnifier. So it, it's critical for you to have that good lighting. But on the other hand, cataracts, that's totally different. Anybody have cataracts? All right. Well, people with cataracts Excuse might find me, I'm, right, I'm right, KDA. Right? Yes. Right now, cataracts are often described as seeing through a dirty window or yes. seeing through cloudy film, right? Like a shower glass. Okay, and, and kind of ripply, right? See it. Right. Well, okay, let's pretend like that filthy windshield on the car and you can drive. And it's really grimy from the street dirt and the snow and ice in the winter. And let's say you're driving west on 22, a local route around here. And let's say you're facing the sun. Yes. What happens when the sun... Worse. Yes, it gets worse. So when the sun hits the so dirty so windshield, it, it really obliterates your vision, right? Yes. So you see, but I like lighting because I have macular degeneration. How come you don't like lighting? So people don't understand. Well, I can't use that lighting because it causes my vision to get worse. You see how different eye diseases impact how lighting is. <laughs> so whereas somebody with macular degeneration really needs that good light. Oh, yeah. People with cataracts, they've got to do something different. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't use lighting, okay, sorry. but sometimes they might want to, to experiment right. with the level of light. And I have different lights that work good with people with cataracts. You'll be trying those. But also you might um, need to you know, control the amount of light you see and how you see it. Like you can still use a lamp, but you don't want to position it so that it hits your eyes. You want to position it lower so that it hits the subject material of what you're seeing. Does that make sense? Yes. Sometimes people with cataracts also will wear a visor or even like little sun lenses, even indoors, if that helps. So okay, so we talked about eye diseases. Now those are only two eye diseases, but other eye diseases like diabetic retinopathy and um, retinitis pigmentosa, they all have different requirements for lighting. Um, and now I'm going to talk about closeness or proximity. And you know, proximity is described um, if you need stronger lighting and you can't put that 300 watt light bulb into your fixture because you'll cause a fire, you need to move the lamp closer. And so that would be a good thing. And believe it or not, you can use a task lamp. And we're going to show different task lamps that are bendable, <coughs> that are flexible, and you can bring it close to your, your task at hand. And when you shorten that lamp, let me get the right. Uh, <clears throat> 
When you bring the lamp, oh, where is that? Okay. When you cut your lighting distance in half, you're quadrupling the amount of light on the page. So if you have a 60 watt lamp, move it half the space you had it. Now you've got almost a, the equivalent of a 240 watt light bulb, even though it's only 60. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So closer is good. Oh, by the way, a little extra. Did you know dust on your light bulb causes you to see less light? Yes. yes. So how many people dust Wash their light the bulbs? Light bulbs. Yes. Gotta dust those light bulbs. I know that sounds really crazy. Also, as a light bulb ages, the filament gets darker. So sometimes waiting until the light bulb blows out may not be the great solution, especially with incandescent light bulbs. Now, the other ones, like you're going to see the LED, they don't have that dimming kind of problem as they <coughs> want. So it's important to have a lamp that you can direct on the object that needs to be viewed. And, and again, the task lamp is, is much more better than a table lamp. How many of you can bend a table lamp down on your reading material? Not too easily. You can. <laughs> a task lamp will allow you to, to direct the lighting. And you know, they're pretty cheap. These task lamps that we bought here, a lot of them were $20. But the heat they put off. Well, you're not going to leave them on all day. So, it's unbearable. Okay, so I'm just going to recap what you <laughs> said so that the folks on the other um, video will hear. Rose was talking about the heat the causing heat. problems. And perhaps you're right. It depends on what light bulb you put in there. Yeah, I, we use 100, uh, 100, 150 times 2, 150 Three. times 2, 150, 900 watts. As long as your lamp is able to handle that, that yeah, it yeah. will produce a lot of heat. But now what you can do, Rose, is try the LED bulbs that didn't put out as much heat. And I don't know if LED comes at 150 watts, but you, they're more expensive, and we're going to get into LED. I'm just afraid of the, it seems like what my vision, I'm colorblind. Uh -huh. So what my vision sees is, when I see an LED lamp, it seems like the light is blue. Well, actually, you're quite correct. And, and we're getting ahead of ourselves. But Rose was talking about the LED lamps having a blue class. There are some called soft white. That's good to know. Soft white. So you can look for them. And actually, Rose, you can try the LED lamp when I get to it. And I have them marked. <clears throat> if you don't get to try it in the presentation itself, everybody's going to get a chance to try every one of these lamps in all sorts of configurations, and, and, and then they can tell me what they think. The LED lugs, even though they are more expensive, they last much longer, so you don't have to buy them <coughs> that often. Correct, and, and, and you said, just for the people at the PAB, LED are more expensive, but actually they use a lot less water, so in the long run, they can save you some money. So they might cost you $6 to buy a bulb, right? But you may be getting a better quality. And let me tell you, I can give you a few uh, words of uh, displeasure over the mini coil fluorescent bulbs. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that too. So when you're reading, your reading should be on the side that you most have the most usable vision. So we're going to do a demo. We're going to pan over here to this reading lamp. Who would like to try reading for me? I have a large print. <coughs> Come on up and watch the course. Tell me, what, what, where's your vision best at? At uh, 20, I'll say 20, 13. Right, and, and what side do you think best at? Okay, so come on, sit down. I don't want to bump your head. There you go. This is a 100 watt Brandt lamp, and I'm going to give you like a large print book. It's a, it's, a Christian nature, so, but it was just, now, what do you think of that? Yeah, good. Now watch. Oh, yeah. No. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute. Now let's, okay, here we have it on the right. Ready? Sure. Now I'm going to do something bad. I'm going to flip it over on the left, see if that makes any difference. It's important to have it on the side of your best reading, mm -hmm. which is better for you. This is your left side. Right. And here we go. We're going to slide it on down. Okay. My right eye. Is see? Right? Not better, yes. See how nice? Now that's a that's a 100 watt brand lamp. The Low Vision Clinic has it. How how cool is that? That's very cool. Does anybody else want to try this real quickly? I thought Irene was up. I forgot your name, Irene. 
So, okay. Um, do you have vision better on your left eye or your right eye? The left. Okay. I have no vision on the right. Okay. So we would want to put it on your left. Okay, and at home I'm using that on the right. Well, if your vision's on your left side, what side do you need to be putting it on? I know, it should be over here. There you go. Rearrange your living room. I will. <laughs> now, I, you may not be able to see it, but let's give it a try, because I, I know you don't have your magnifier with you. Now, so you can direct it on there without getting it in your eye. Can you? Yeah, I can read it. Okay. Do you want me to read it or what? No, uh, and then how's this? Okay. All right, now wait a minute. We're going to do the flippy floppy. Here we go. Over here. This is the wrong side. Right. Here we go. Ah, hey, Irene, you learned something today. Yes, I did. Thank yes, you so much. Yes, I did. Thank you. You're quite welcome. You're all right. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> one important thing: know your better side. Does everybody know which side you have the best vision on? I'm a little confused because I have vision in my left eye. But it's over so far by my nose that I feel like it's on my right side. I, I kind of different. But you have to know what side your vision's on so to make the most out of what you see. Now, I'm going to flip this up with handwriting. How many of us are right-handed? Okay. How many of us are left-handed? Hey, left-handers are the only ones in the right mind. Okay. Yeah, but what if I was started out with the right hand? You're multi-talented. Now I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you how about you want to come up and I'm going to demonstrate with you for writing. When you write, you're going to put the lamp. Let's say if you're right-handed, you're going to want the lamp on your left yes. side yes. so that you don't cast yeah. a shadow yes. with your hands. Yes. Do you like to come up and try? Sure. Okay. Now we're heading over to this one. I have old line paper, and you know you don't necessarily have to. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Left-handed now. Okay, so <laughs> we will want to have it on the right side. Okay. Try just writing something. And I have my vision right there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yes. So you'll the camera may not be able to show it, but it's not going to cast a shadow on your hand because because the the shadow is on the left. Whereas, and I'll flip it the wrong way for Doug to show the others. Continue writing, and I'm going to move the lamp around if you're all right with that. Mm -hmm. If I were to put it on this side, you, you cast a shadow. Do you see how it yeah. casts a shadow? Right. That's worse, is that not? Yes, especially when you have that vision to start with. Right, that's very confusing. So you see how you need to have your lamp on the right side. So yes. that's positioning. Great, thank you for your help. All right. Oops. All righty. Okay. So even if, even if you see well with your, you know, left eye and you're left-handed, you're going to put your lamp on the right side. That makes it a little bit confusing. <coughs> but does everybody understand that? Yeah. Right. When reading, you only have to consider what is my best side. Side. When writing, you have to think of what hand do I write with. All right. So that's. That's that. Okay. Now we're going to talk about clearing the clutter. Anybody know about clutter? How many people like all kinds of tchotchkes all over their house? <laughs> I don't. Actually, if we do, I end up having either me or the dogs knock them over, so I like using my clutter. Um, visual clutter makes it hard for you to sort out what you're seeing. Does anybody know what I mean? Yes. There's a lot to look at. Your brain can't process it as well. You're already working hard to see what you do see. So I'm gonna do an experiment with you. I'm gonna put down my iPad for a minute. I'm gonna show Excuse you. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. I have a question. Oh, good enough. Let's go. Uh, this is Center for the Blind. Uh, the question was when you were doing the experiment with the person who was left-handed for the task lamp. What what bulb were you using? Um, for that one, I was using a. Oops. That was a 40 watt crystal bulb. 40 watt crystal? Yes. And what is your name again? Diane. Thank you. Diane what? Michael. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Well, yes, but did it look like 40? Because we put it really close. What happens when you bring things close? It gets multiplied four times. So actually, what the wattage on the page was a lot more than 40. 
However, if you would have stuck that in a lamp, it would have been useless to us. Is that not so? Is that a reflective? They have like a reflective lamp. Well, and Rose wants to know, ladies and gentlemen from the other PABs. 40 watts. That 40 watt is a bulb. The lamp has got a white interior that lets the light get cast down to the page. However, the reading lamp, which I really like and really wish everybody would buy, and this is not a plug for Center for Vision Loss, the reading lamp has a silver cone around it. And Rose, you'll get a chance to try it. But it's a silver reflective cone around the light bulb, and it, it directs the light on the page. It's a fantastic lamp. I used to, when I worked at the low vision doctor's office, I sold those things by the caseload because they, they're just so good. Now, we're going to talk about visual clutter. Unless anybody has any other questions. Anybody? Jim, did you have a question? Uh, when you were talking about the, the cataracts, uh -huh. I, had a, I had a cataract removed in my uh, good eye in uh, 1993, my left eye. Uh -huh. And they put a in, lens implant in my eye, and, and I could see as well as I always, you know, seen, you know, that's good. So they they did a lot. They they did. It was good for me. That's great. Some cataracts are able to be operated on. Other people, if they have diabetes or glaucoma, the doctors don't want to touch the eye because we don't want to lose any more vision exactly, that they already exactly. have. Right. So sometimes in those people who have the other complications, they're going to have to make do with the dirty windshield. Sure. And and unfortunately, but sometimes that's what we have to do. But there's always a way to get around it. So that's, you know, I'm here to give you hope. No matter how bad your vision is, if you can't see it, we're going to be able to feel it. If you, you know, so there's more ways than one to skin a cat. So if some of the, if someone came here and said I can't use any of the lighting at all, that's okay because although it's not going to be in this session, there's always something called non-visual techniques, and every one of us may need some of that anyway if our vision is that bad. For example, there's some things I do with my eyes because it works. And some things that are such a bother to try to do with my eyes, I use my fingers. So it, it, it's a combination. But I can still do the things I want to do. You know, minus driving a car. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about visual clutter. So visual clutter makes it hard for your brain to sort out what you're seeing. And um, for example, an example, I'm walking away, excuse me. I hate to do this to these poor people. This is the Maxi Aids catalog. Sorry, Maxi Aids. It, if you look at the, the cover, and you'd have to come up close, I understand, but I'm going to show the PAPs. It's very cluttered and hard to figure out what's written on the cover. Yes. So the more cluttered a page is, the harder it is to see. Yes. The same point, I'm going to extol. CVL, Center for Vision Loss, do you notice that there's no clutter on the page? Yes. That's a lot easier to see. Yes. So visual clutter can help make you or break you. Yes. If you have a lot of clutter, your brain is going to be exhausted trying to see what you're seeing. Now, I'm going to also show you something with visual clutter. Here is a bed, an Advil. On this tablecloth, I'm going to bring it over to the PAB first. Is it, Doug, can you see that? It's actually on visual clutter and poor contrast. How many people can find this pill? Uh, it's right there. It's there. Okay. But now watch. If I put it on a white background, and I'll come over to the other tables. Yes. How much easier is that? Much easier. See? Yes. So like contrast and visual clutter. You have it over here, you don't see it very well. Yeah, I know. But look, Irene, if you put it over here, yes, what do you see? I know. Okay? I have that problem. I've already taken the wrong meds. Oh, we don't want you to take the wrong meds. Yes. It's showing the visual clutter. If the pill is over here, it's hard for you to see. Can you see it? But now if I put it on the white, look how easy that is. <laughs> do I need to come in the background, guys, over here? I've got a 
So I showed the PAPs. The here's the bad the bad section right here. Visual clutter. A lot of pictures in the pill. But if you clear away the visual clutter. And I'll put it here. You can see that the pill is easier to find. All right. Right. And I'm going to tell them that. Yes. Uh huh. Right. And let me let me tell the BAB bunch that so they can hear what we're saying. The comments have been flying around the room about how dropping, let's say, a piece of paper on a white floor makes it hard for people to find things. Dropping a, maybe a dark object like a tomato on a dark floor. So everybody's really knowing a lot about the fact that that got, we're talking actually contrast there. That 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 the visual clutter and contrast, you know, can make it difficult for you to see what you can see. We all have limited vision. We need to make it as easy for ourselves to see as possible. So with visual clutter also, just when you're sitting down to pay bills or read your stuff, get rid of all the peripheral stuff. Clear your desk off. Clear your table off. Because the more stuff around you, the harder it is for you to sort out. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Also, visual clutter can be on the page. Like I showed you the Maxi Aids catalog, fancy print, headlines, clip art, different styles of print, all impair reading. Can you imagine that? Actually, I found a magazine. Hang on. Just regular catalogs. Yes, actually, I have one here. Just all a right. simple catalog. Yes, yeah, see, and um, now. They're impossible. Right, because first of all, there's print over the pictures. So print over the pictures. Not a good thing for visually impaired people. Right. Uh, and here, here is something that um, I'm going to cover the thing so we don't get any problems. This is a senior magazine, but they printed the title over the picture. Now, that's great for people with 2020, but everybody here um, may have a diff I would have a difficult time trying to read that title. Yes. And on top of it all, they did stylized shading yes. so that you, it's like a shadow under it. So you see how visual color can make a difference. Now, background lighting, and, and everybody wants, wants to know, why is background lighting so good when we already have these nice lamps here? Believe it or not, background lighting is needed to reduce eye strain. Even if you have poor vision, you're, you're going to have eye strain. For example, if you try to read under a bright lamp and the entire room is dark, it may cause eye strain and it may affect how you can focus on your reading. And why? It has to do with the ratio. Let's say if you're reading under that good 100 watt light bulb, but the room is dark. So you have 100 watts to no watts, dark room. But now if you put on your 60 watt or your 50 watt, 40 watt lamp in the background, then you have a ratio of 100 watts to 50 watts, less eye strain. The difference between the wattage in your reading lamp and the background light will reduce your eye strain. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're sitting down to read, don't just have one light on because you're setting yourself up for eye strain. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, with contrast, any questions so for all that? Y'all are such a good audience. I have one. Sure. Excuse me. Um, I'm from Keystone uh, Blind. Uh, and the question I had is when you said the background lighting and everything, um, what happens if you're sitting in a room and you got glare coming off? Of oh, we're going to talk about that too. Glare. Okay. Yes. So yes, glare is huge. Let me uh, get the <clears throat> contrast. And actually, uh, oh, we still have a lot of contrast to do. Boy, how time flies. <laughs> do I have to speed it up a little bit? Okay. I, I'm so sorry. I really okay, guys. So good point. Let's go on to. I'm going to skip one of these stations here. I have a contrast experiment, but we'll come back to it if we can have time, and we could definitely do this later. Some of the contrast experiments later. Glare, and I'll go right to the glare section. 
Brian Garrison, a certified low vision therapist, has videotaped a tutorial on lighting that's also in vi on vision aware. Glare is caused by too much light bouncing around, making it hard for you to focus. Now, um, glare actually causes certain eye conditions too, like we've talked about cataracts. Glare can be addressed by doing two things, and maybe this will answer your question. By reducing your wattage of light that you're using, by changing the direction of the lamp, actually by three or four things, by um, by using a background light like we talked about, and by also using a filter or a visor. So for some people, I'm going to, um, some people can use different shaded glasses from yellow to gray, light gray to light green. They can cut out some of the glare. So now I want to talk about types of lighting and uh, how to personalize. This would be really good for glare. Uh -huh. Is that a question? Hello. Yes. What, what about what about the, uh, what about the glare coming from outside? I, I mean, gotcha. I, I, I have problems with glare coming from outside because of where the windows are situated in my apartment, which makes it really hard to even watch TV. <laughs> Well, well two things. One, you want your TV not against your window. Yeah, That's I, number one. Don't have okay. your TV facing like uh, on the same wall as the window. Get yourself a pair, a good a pair of blinds or curtains. Right. Or I have blinds, and, and I have, I have in my living room. There's window on each wall. So I mean, I, you know. Get drapes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're gonna have to do curtains or blinds. blinds. Believe me, the blinds don't help. No, you gotta get through. Well, there's blackout blinds. They would help. You may have to get a. You may have to uh, up what you're doing. In other words, if what you're doing isn't working now, then you're gonna have to increase it. If the blinds don't work, then get curtains. If the, that, you know, there's blackout <coughs> shades you could use. Blackout shades. Oh. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Now, for people with glare sensitivity, I want to show them a dimmer switch. Now, anybody who have a real problem with glare in this room? Okay. Uh, okay, oh, what if you come back up? I'm going to sit you right here. I have, and I'm going to have to um, zoom on over. You can buy a dimmer switch to fit in your lamps, and I'm going to see if you can focus on that. All right, this dimmer switch you can buy at a box store, and you can personalize the amount of light you're seeing. All right? Diane? Yeah. CBVI here again. We have a comment. Okay. Right. In regards to the lamp uh, question, and he has the glare that comes in both windows, and the blinds do not work. He right. Can Home Depot or Bose. And the film is on a roll that you apply to the glass, which prevent that sun, direct sun, okay. uh, heat. And that would, um, you can still see out the window, but right. it would have the glare, the glare also right. that heat that comes from the outside, the sun. So he could go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get that. That's, That's a very, very good um, comment. Yes, very good. It's film. It's film. It's film. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right, so the dimmer switch for people with glare. You can, this is 100 watt, and I'm going to put it on right as now. Now, scale it back to where to where you feel you're comfortable with. I'm, I'm going to come over to the other side and hold it because it's unsteady with everything oh, I have okay. here. So now there's a dimmer switch to your right, okay. right over here. Slide it down to see how how much would work for you. Now, you may not be able to, you have to get closer to read unless you can see from that. Okay. okay. There you go. You've got your personalized wattage. Oh, okay. See how cool that is? Oh, all right. And this just plugs into a regular yeah. lamp? Yeah. It's 12 bucks. Oh, my goodness. Does it work with LEDs? I don't know that. Actually, good question. Um, we can, at, after this session's over, we'll plug in an LED and see what happens. It does work with uh, chromalux and incandescence. Okay. Okay? Oh, no, nice. Okay, now I want to show you odd lamps for matching clothes. 
Anybody have difficulty with color identification? <laughs> oh, boy. well, stay up here. This is an odd lamp. Now, this is actually a good lamp for some people with cataracts, but many people who have macular degeneration feel it's fairly useless. But come on over here, and let's try this. I have different swatches of color. An odd lamp symbolizes and simulates daylight. Now, there's different swatches of color, and I'm going to get all the way maybe Doug can see, or can you see? All right, see if you can locate or tell what, what is the black? See if you can see the black first. And you can hold it up here, too, you see. Odd lamps are used by artists to imitate color. Oh, pick it up and get it up close to the lamp. Okay, lamp's right here? Yep. Okay. What color do you yeah, think that is? More like a blue. Okay, correct. Okay. What color is this one? Here. That one looks more like a black. Okay. Cycling some colors. Who can? Who would like to try this real quick? This is cool. Now look oh, lamp. Oh, okay. They're relatively cheap. They're about fifty bucks. That looks like a, like a gray, maybe a green. Right. Okay. It's a it's a gray. And that is Western blue. Here, see what, what color is that? Okay. Okay, I'm looking at that here. Okay. Yeah, and you can put it up as close as yeah. you want it. Okay. You can put it. That looks like a dark, like a black or a navy. It's actually a green. You can use an aunt lamp in your closet. And, and, you know, it's small, it's portable, it can be connected, you know, you know in, in, in your bedroom. And it will work sometime, and it's better than, now here's the difference. She couldn't identify all the colors, but now try to, to pick out the gray. Yeah, there's no one. Okay, so there you go. So you see how that made a big difference. Okay? Um, now, there's a, okay, I'm going to give you some, some input about the mini coils. How many people have those little fluorescent coil light bulbs in the house? The fluorescent light bulbs, the coils. They're really bad, aren't they? Yes. No, love them. Oh, you like them? I hate them. I hate them too. Fluorescent light bulbs. My husband won't allow them. Fluorescent lights keep, keep um, turning on and off. They flicker and right. they catch all the They're flickers horrible. and that right. causes distress with my eyes. Exactly. And also the other complaint, now I have a daylight bulb. Um go ahead. Is this a fluorescent day vitamin E out of your system? I don't even know, but that might be a good comment. Um, all I want to tell you about the mini coils is don't buy them. I hate to say that, but most of the people I've ever met with low vision have difficulty with it. Now, um, we have other tasks here to try. I'd like someone to try contrast, and I I want to ask um, do you want Irene and do you want to come back up too? What is your name? Not Kathy. Kathy? <laughs> now contrast is something we have a problem with, and I'm gonna allow Doug to slide back first. We'll have to do some measuring cups. All right. Um, uh, we're almost out of time, believe it or not. So I'm going to try to, we have actually enough time for Doug to talk and for us to practice. Good. Okay, guys, who, um, the crowd in the back there. We're going to talk about contrast and measuring. And Irene has been a good sport. And she told me she couldn't measure because of her visual impairment. And I said, you don't have to see to measure. What you need to do is change the contrast. And you notice how we were talking about contrast. How dark black on white is good, right? right yes. So when you're measuring, let's say you want to measure coffee. Well, pretend like this is brown sugar or whatever. When you're measuring something, use a good light. I'm going to open this coffee. I didn't know it wasn't open. Now, there's two things you need to do. One is to measure, memorize the order of the cups. Can you count to four? Yeah. Let's hear it. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay, look. Whole, half, yeah. third, yeah. fourth. So you don't need to see this little stuff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> a fourth a cup of coffee. Now, using your contrast principles, 
Would you use the black cup to measure the coffee or the white cup? The white. Now watch. Why, why don't you try first measuring it with the black? Go ahead and just scoop it out as best you can. All right, and you can level it off. Now, okay, now try it with the white. Okay. Which one's easier for you to do? The white. Right, the white, the opposite color. So I'm going to show Doug and the rest of PAB. Thank you, Irene. That high contrast makes a difference in everything we do. I have on here a tray, and I'm showing that if you're in the kitchen with your light, and you should have a task lamp for the kitchen, you're going to use high contrast. So if you're measuring dark ingredients, you're not going to use a dark cup. You're going to use a white cup. And the same if you're measuring sugar, you're going to use a dark cup. You see how it pops with the white cup? Does that make sense? And the same with contrast. Right, well, you need to get the black ones. Irene said that she had the white ones, right? The same with contrast. These phones have high contrast. They show you know, both black on white or white on black. I'm going to walk to the front of the group here. This is a high crown trust phone. Are they easier to see? <coughs> oh, see how easy that is to see? Okay. Ladies in the background, you've probably seen any of these phones, right? You have one, okay. And the guys in the, in the last table. Now, <coughs> I'm going to let Doug turn it over, and then we're going to get to practice on the nitty gritty. time for, for questions, I believe. Um, I asked for just like a couple minutes today. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a low vision therapist, but I found a few things uh, with lighting that I just wanted to pass on, whether it's for our customers with low vision or even your family members. Um, just a few helpful things. First of all, let's not forget about the lowly flashlight. You know, um, I think uh, a flashlight is very useful. Um, they now come with the LEDs, and they're very strong. I had one, but I, when I went to bring it today, of course it was missing. I could blame my stepsons for putting it somewhere, but I think it was Doug Yingling. <laughs> but anyway, if, you, if something drops on the floor, if you're looking for something in the bottom of the closet, whatever it is where you just need something quick, you know, a flashlight, um, they come in all sizes, of course. I carry one even in my briefcase, because once in a while I need to look at something that's not uh, illuminated. So, yeah, see, it's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to just mention uh, about headlamps. First time I learned about a headlamp, I was camping with a friend of mine. I was getting ready to do the dishes in the dark, of course. And he's there, well, would you like to use a headlamp? And I'm like, what do you, what, what, what do you mean? What's that? I was like sort of naive, I never seen one. Uh, headlamps now also come in all strengths and sizes. They have some pretty powerful ones. Uh, this one I've had for some years. Uh, so anytime you're doing a task around the house, it fits around your head with a wow. with a um, you know with a brace, uh, and the lamp is on your forehead, and you can turn it on, and you can also adjust it. So if I'm doing something where I need both hands. Uh, it's really helpful you know, any, for anyone who just needs a little more light. If you're going to hang a picture, you're going to hammer a nail, and it's, you, know, you, you, need, you need a little extra light. So just mentioning these things as an awareness thing. You know, a headlamp is sometimes helpful. What kind of batteries? Are they the cell batteries that are? 
This headlamp uh, uses a AAA battery. AAA battery. AAA battery, yeah. They also come, um, there's one that just fits onto your, um, onto your. Uh, this is CBVI, we have a question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, um, where can you find those? Uh, I've seen them at, at the hardware stores. Um, camping supplies. I think camping supplies. I think this one, um, I don't know whether it was Cabela's or uh, one of the outdoor stores. But you can find them in the hardware stores now. I've seen them. Yes. This is a version that fits right onto your cap if you're wearing a cap. Um, this is not very strong. Uh, it's just a kind of a, a, yet a red light if you're working around a campsite or something. But they come in all different sizes, so just something helpful to keep in mind. Eschenbach has some that fit on the side of the boxes. Light specs. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest invention I've ever heard of. Uh, the man from Eschenbach, who uh, the low vision products, was here and, and said, well, we have this line of light specs. Um, these are illuminated magnif magnifying glasses. And I just think they're great. Now, whether they would work for somebody with low vision, they come in different strengths, they may or may not. But for anyone who's doing some fine work and you need some illumination right where you're working, they're, they're really great. And remember, the, the theory of getting closer, the light will be brighter for you if you have to get closer to the, to the work so that light will be brighter for you. That's right. Yes. yes. The light right. specs don't come, I think, beyond 14 dioptics unless they've been through that, but they're still very cool. And actually, I've seen places where there's attachable something on the side. Okay. Where do you get the To your low vision doctor. Yeah, these, these are available here at the Center for Vision Loss, but they are kind of a low vision item. And, and you, because of the magnification, you, you do have to hold your hold your material fairly close to be in focus. Um, I'm, I'm looking at about 12 inches here. So um, those are my, my practical solutions for uh, lighting. Also, um, there is a cane available that has a, a little illuminated LED on it. If you're out at night and you don't usually maybe use a cane, but you need something in, in the dark, um, my father goes, he, he, he does fine usually, but he goes out to his Lions Club meetings, you know, in the winter time, his macular degeneration. Once he get, once he's outside in the dark, you know, his vision is pretty much gone. So um, you can use you can use a cane with a light, or even the flashlight. You know, just take take a flashlight for that spot illumination. Or if someone has a smartphone, you can use it. Flashlight on the phone. And Diane says use the flashlight on the smartphone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, Diane, come on back. Okay. Time too, I guess. Um. Okay. So we're going to get into the craftsman piece, where the PABs may not be able to be with us for very long. But so just in case we um. Excuse me. You know. Excuse me. Sure. Montgomery, we have a we have a question here, or two. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I want to know about the reading hole they were talking about. The reading hole? Yeah. Reading the lights they were talking about earlier. Which um, one? Something like that. I'm not sure. Maybe if you can, can you? Um, let's see. She wants to know about reading. The reading bowl for purchasing. Oh, there's different places. I got a lot of the bulbs at like Office Depot. Now you have to experiment. Some reading bulbs may be great for me, and some aren't maybe great for you. You could check the LED light emitting diode. You could check for crystal clear bulbs. Chromalux. Let me show you what they look like. If you just give me a minute, but you can get these anywhere. Okay, and where's the LED? Okay, that I don't have the box for. Huh. Okay. I have boxes for almost everything. This is called the reveal. It's 60 watts. Now that is, it casts a blue light. Sometimes people with macular degeneration, 
don't like it, but it tends to make the colors look more true. This is clear. It's called crystal. It can, if you have problems with glare, you may have difficulties using it. But you see, this is all going to be a trial and error for you. These are what not to buy. Sorry, uh, GE. This is a mini coil. What not to buy. Don't buy. Now, the other thing is the, the LEDs. And I'm going to show you an LED lamp. Alrighty. Let's come up. Okay. This is an LED light bulb, and it's called, now, now there was some talk about it being too blue. The earlier LEDs were too blue. This is called soft white LED, and it's a 60 watt equivalent. It's really heavy, and it's about uh, $7, $6.90. I got, I got all of them at like an office depot. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. I mean, there's always been different colors. You know, the, the regular incandescent are different colors, like paint. So right. That would be better for your eyes, too. Do you know if the LEDs are made that way? Actually, I don't, but that brings me to one thing I do want to mention. Now, color can bump up the contrast in your reading material. So I have here, now I might cast a glare, I'm trying not to, That's good. a reading film. It's yellow, and I'm going to bring it around. It can make the black look more bright. If you look on this side, the black looks more faded, and on this side, it looks bright. It's a film. Mm. Mm. Those are nice. Here's well, and that's, that's right for you. It is difficult for you to read on yellow background. But for someone else, maybe they find that it's better. You know, and, and you're right. It's very accurate for you. It's difficult for someone else. Here. Yes, they do. Yep. I think they're about $5 a pack. Guys. Diane, where do you get those? We have a question on where you where okay. do you get those? I got them from your store. <laughs> <laughs> you got them here, of course. <laughs> of course. Maxie should have them. Uh, Maxie A's also. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I did see them in Maxie A's. Yeah, I got one. They're nice. Finally, they're on today. Any other questions? We have question, any questions from the uh, participating groups? Okay, so what we're going to do... CBVI has a question. Go ahead. Sure. I, am, I have a Pyrex uh, uh, glad measuring cup with red letters on it. And I can see it when I, when, I, when I use my viewer, I can see it. But I can't use my viewer and, and look at it and, and measure uh, and put the, put the food in it at the same time. I would recommend that you give that cup away or use it to warm up something. Well, to me, a glass one. I understand. Now, there's comments in the room, a good comment about putting tape or take a black permanent marker if you want to. But in my view, my opinion is I like to keep it as simple with myself as possible. I prefer using, and this is what I do for cooking at my own home, I use the nested cups. And if you can count to four, one, two, three, four, whole, half, third, fourth, you can identify your cups. You don't have to read the small writing. You get white cups for all your dark ingredients, dark cups for all your light ingredients. Measuring spoons come like that, too. And that's what I would do. Now, you can struggle and have somebody put black marker on there. And Walmart actually has a, a Pyrex one with black marker. But I don't want to put myself through all that. I like to make it easier. Now, here's the black and white measuring spoons. And I do it all by thinking about it. The tablespoon, teaspoon, half, and fourth. And I use, I use these all for liquids and dry. Diane? Diane? Diane, I have a, I have a comment um, from Montgomery. Um, I know in the past, Tupperware had measuring cups that were, um, well, I don't know what colors they are now, but they, 
They were, I think, like orange, and, and I think they had yellow or something like that, which aren't very, probably not a great contrast, but right. it had um, cups that were, there was a six in them. It was... Um, right, I know exactly what it was. Yeah. I always took out the two-thirds and the three-fourths because I thought it was confusing for me. Even though I'm a smart girl, I, I don't want to accidentally mistake the three-fourths for the whole. So when I had, long ago when I bought Tupperware, I immediately removed those two cups and tossed them out. You know, what, two, three, four, I kept it simple. I just keep all the cups together. If that works for you, that's good. But if you're confusing things and accidentally not measuring, then get rid of them. Sorry to be so opinionated. Um, I just think it's easier, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but I would rather make, I do things very fast, and I cook, and I work, and I have all kinds of things going on. So when I put something together, I'm, I'm rushing. I don't have time to get out a magnifier to figure out what cup is what. I want to just grab it and get it. But I found that the two-thirds and three-fourths bothered me more than helped me, and so I got rid of it. But that's a personal choice. <laughs> right, so right, that's right. Eliminate the two uh, if you have the Tupperware ones. But now, you know, these measuring cups, the white ones, believe mm -hmm. it or not, and even the black ones you could get at dollar stores at Target or at Maxi H for a lot more money. So we have a question at CBVI. Go ahead. At home, my husband bought these, um, these uh, light bulbs that last longer. And I was, about lasting longer? Is that the kind of spiral you're talking about? The, 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 spiral, the mini coils, if you have macular degeneration, there's some data out there that the mini coil fluorescent light bulbs, the spiral ones, cause eye strain because they cast a blue glare. Um, many people with macular degeneration complain about them. Now, if you like them, continue to use them, but I haven't heard a lot of positives about them. They do last long, but so do the LEDs. And the LEDs, according to um, a lot of the data, they're, they're easier on your electric bill in the long run, so they do pay for themselves. And they don't heat up. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but they, the, I, don't, I don't know whether they're LED or not, but they, they re the, the, the light that comes off of them messes up my glare. I mean, the glare from, you know, it just messes up my sight. Well, my guess is if it's a spiral, let me pull one out of the lamp and show you. Give me a minute. Um, oh, yeah, it's down here. Hang on. Can you see it, uh, Candy? She, she's getting it. She hasn't got it yet. Okay. I'm going to describe it. This is a fluorescent mini coil. It's, it's the equivalent of 60 watts. It has like a glass tube that wraps around in like a coil or a spring-like um, form. Out. Like yeah. That. Those yeah. tend to cause a lot of eye strain for people. Now, but that doesn't mean that everybody is going to have eye strain. Low vision is so different. What may make it hard for most of the people in this room to see may be something that works for you. But I haven't heard a lot of positives about them. And they uh, are cheaper. But in my viewpoint, you want what's best for your eyesight. If you're having eye strain and you're feeling stressed with your eyes when you're trying to read, maybe that's a sign that you need to change up your lighting situation. I am, yeah, I am. Diane, okay. have, you, have you had any experience with horizontal coil bulbs? Um, you know, again, yes, I have, but, but it depends on what kind of, um, are we talking fluorescence again? Yes. Well, again, I'll just say, if that works for you, that's good. But the problem with the fluorescents are that it puts a blue cast out there, something blue that you don't see, that is perceived by people with macular degeneration as being eye straining. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, another point, is it true that the, the fluorescent lights also have like mercury in them? That's correct, too. Can't just throw them in the right. I'm going to say there's a comment in this room. These light bulbs have mercury, and they've had less mercury over these recent years, but that you really can't throw these in the trash can. You have to take them to um, a recycling place. And many of us who don't drive, that's one more chore that I have to arrange a ride for. And that's another reason why I don't like these, because I don't want to ruin the environment with the mercury. Is if you break this open, there's mercury inside here, and it's a pollutant. 
Any other questions? Rose has one, and one you have more. one. And this, this will be it. my biggest problem in my life right now. Are any of those, do any of those have magnetic bottoms that you can, it's from the microwave and the stove to the countertop is, or the other is a disaster. Okay. For, Let me, and battery operated. Okay, so we'll talk about that, and then what, what's your question? My LED lights look like that. This? Yeah. Okay, the ones that are doing now may look like that on the inside, but they have a clear bowl on top. Oh, okay. And look for, if you're going to buy any other LEDs, look for the soft white. Okay. Um, well, uh, they never burn out. Right. No. <laughs> now, <laughs> let me talk about the in the kitchen with the fact that maybe the comment Rose had was uh, at not having a lamp that would work well in the kitchen. And there's one really interesting lamp I want to show, Doug, if, if we could get down to the task lamp that's flip on. Okay. This is a halogen, and I'm going to turn this on, clip on task lamp. And you can clip it on, as long as you can stretch a cord somewhere safely, you can clip it on your kitchen cabinets. You can clip it on the side to see and read. And actually, later on, Rose, you'll come up here, and I have food stuff you can identify. But it's a halogen. So again, halogens are going to produce a lot of heat. So you do not want to leave these on a lot. But you do find that it can be useful for a few minutes. What do you think? So here? Uh, you'll have to talk with Doug. We, we, you could get these at like an Office Depot. And what, what's the call? Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you um, later. It's a, it's a task lamp with the clip on. It, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's nonstop. It's just nonstop yeah. burns. It's yes. Repeated. Well, and also you need to look at your kitchen. If you're having problems with your kitchen, reduce your clutter. Change, you know, clear your counters. They are. You know, and that, those sort of things you need to do. And if they could make like. Oven mitts that like go up. They do. They make uh, and they have them here. They uh, have them here. Yes. Any other questions from the room or from the other PAPs? Okay. One more question. One more question. Go ahead. Um, okay. Good, good point. Let me let me let me say that loud for the people in the other. Okay. We have a very very good question about reading the stove. Now that's where there's two things that come into play. One, you could possibly use a flashlight like Doug was talking about, but being a vision rehab therapist in me, I would say let's mark your stove. This is where you might come to a point where you need some non-visual techniques and things that are adapted that you could touch of a contrasting color. Case in point, the lamp dimmer switch. It's a lot like what I mark a stove with. It has a black button that I put on. It has bright yellow tape and I wrote on and off, well, your stove can be marked in a similar fashion. So you might not be able to use your remaining vision for the stove. In fact, it's my stove is all in Braille. Because if I had to use my vision for the stove, I'd have to get a step ladder, sit on the top of the burner, which is a safety hazard, and try to read the dial. There's just no use doing that. We, we don't want to get hurt. We want to be safe. So there's a time for using your vision. There's a time for using your fingers. Having your stove marked would be a good time to use your fingers. Any further questions or comments? I think we're out of time. Okay, are we done now? All righty. I think we're out of time, Diane. Let's give Diane a round of applause for preparing this program. I'd like y'all to come up and try to. Take care, everyone, in TAV land. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice day now. Have a nice day. You're welcome. Okay guys, you're welcome to come up and try all the different things.